On the 15th of August this year, Australians commemorate the 75th anniversary of the cessation of hostilities against the Japanese forces in the Pacific. The date is also significant in that it also implies the end of the Second World War. The beginning of the Pacific War and the rapid advance of Japanese forces threatened the Australian mainland for the first time in its history. The RAAF was quite unprepared for the emergency and initially had negligible forces available for service in the Pacific. In 1941 and early 1942, many RAF airmen, including numbers 1, 8, 21 and 453 squadrons, saw action with the RAF Far East Command in the Malayan, Singapore and Dutch East Indies campaigns. Equipped with low-performance aircraft such as the Brewster Buffalo and Lockheed Hudsons, the Australian squadron suffered heavily against Japanese Zeros. During the fighting for Rabaul in early 1942, number 24 squadron fought a brief but ultimately futile events as the Japanese advanced southwards towards Australia. The devastating air raids on Darwin in February 1942 increased concerns about the direct threat facing Australia. Shortages of fighter and ground attack aircraft led to the acquisition of US-built Kitty Hawks and the rapid design and manufacture of the first Australian fighter, the CAC Boomerang. RAF Kitty Hawks came to play a crucial role in the New Guinea and Solomon Islands campaigns, especially in the Battle of Milne Bay. In the Battle of the Bismarck Sea, Bristol Bow Fighters proved to be highly effective ground attack and maritime strike aircraft. The RAAF operated a number of consolidated PBY Catalinas as long-range bombers and maritime patrol aircraft. The RAF's heavy bomber force comprised predominantly over 280 B-24 Liberators, equipping seven squadrons, which could bomb Japanese targets as far away as Borneo and the Philippines from airfields in Australia and New Guinea. By late 1945, the RAAF had also received or ordered about 500 P-51 Mustangs for fighter ground attack purposes. By 1945, the RAF's main operational formation in the Pacific, the 1st Tactical Air Force, comprised over 21,000 personnel, while the RAF as a whole consisted of about 50 squadrons and 6,000 aircraft, of which over 3,000 were operational. The first TAF's final campaigns were fought in support of Australian ground forces in Borneo. Had the war continued, some of its personnel and equipment would likely have been allocated to the invasion of the Japanese mainland. However, the war was brought to a sudden end by the declaration of war on Japan by the Soviet Union and the US nuclear attacks on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. This led to the intervention by the Japanese Emperor, who gave a radio address announcing the surrender of Japan on the 15th of August. The formal signing of the Instrument of Surrender ceremony took place a couple of weeks later aboard the USS Missouri on the 2nd of September 1945, where General Sir Thomas Blamey signed the Japanese surrender document on behalf of Australia. Australia's Prime Minister Ben Chifley announced that the war was over and to mark victory in the Pacific, the Australian Government presented a public holiday, declaring it Victory in the Pacific Day or VP Day. On the 15th of August, Australia commemorates the service of all those personnel who served in the Pacific Campaign and we remember particularly the 2,000 RAAF personnel who were killed, wounded or captured.